Hello and welcome to PLU Presents Back and Forth, where I will ask poets who have contributed to our video series uh, about their video poetry, what has inspired them and what tips and tricks they might like to share with you. Today it is a great privilege to have with us an author, an actor and an environmentalist, Rufo Quintavale, who is based in Paris, where he regularly contributes to the Paris poetry scene. Among some of his publications are Here and Now, uh, with corrupt, published with Corrupt Press in 2016, and his latest collection of poetry, Rain Songs, uh, was published by Ravenna Press in 2019. Thank you very much, Rufo, for being here. And my first question to you would be this. When did you first start putting video to poetry? I first started experimenting or fooling around with uh, poetry and and uh, image about three years ago. I kind of got a bit fed up with the whole process of writing, writing a poem, which is lovely, uh, then submitting it for publication and waiting months and months before you got uh, a reply or never getting a reply at all. I wanted sort of new ways to put my work out in the world. It was a moment in my life where for various uh, profess professional and personal reasons, I couldn't actually physically go to uh, live poetry events and open mics as much as I had done in the past. And then also that feeling that lots of writers and artists get uh, that you're not quite managing to get yourself across. You're, there's something you want to say, um, but the tools at your disposal aren't quite allowing you to say it. Uh, and to begin with, it was very much poetry driving it. What were images that I could add, add to my poems that would uh, allow me to communicate, communicate a little differently? Yeah, it began there. I started putting stuff up on YouTube about three years ago and have done it off and on ever since. And I must say, at a time like this, when we are all sadly uh, you know, forced to, to, to be apart, it's lovely to have that, uh, that way of reaching out. I think you're pointing to one thing, which is a, a fed up, a uh, feeling of being fed up with poetry as a written medium. You know, this idea that we have of what, where do you find poetry? You find poetry in, in books, uh, on old bookshelves, in forgotten corners of some antiquarian bookshop or something like that. That's that's maybe the idea of poetry, maybe. Uh, but actually, poetry is something is something much more. Poetry is something that will connect uh, connect us uh, off the page. So I was wondering then if that is the case, if if that's something that you would agree with. How has this desire to communicate and to to interact with people beyond the page? How does that actually influence the the pictures and the sequences and the videos that you select? Uh, for your poetry, uh, for, for your video poetry? The images that I use has evolved over time. As I said, to begin with, it was very much the poems that were driving it and the images. I wouldn't say they were secondary, but they were there to, to accentuate or to highlight certain semantic or musical shifts in the poem. Now I find myself working all, with the two almost uh, on an equal footing, image and, image and words. Um, if I see something that strikes me as interesting, I'll take a picture of it, I'll, you know, I'll take a short film of it, um, not totally knowing what I'm going to do with that afterwards. Uh, and it may be weeks or even months later that, um, that I find a way to combine the poem and the image. Um, so I would say now the two, are, yeah, they're almost on an equal footing. They're each communicating, so you have two, two things going on. You have the poem, you have the... You have the images. You have a third thing, which is the interaction between between text and uh, and image. And then, obviously, the fourth thing, which is how the uh, how the viewer uh, or the listener experiences this. And that's something I like about about YouTube uh, in particular, is that it's all it's all anonymous. So you don't know who's watching your your videos or who's listening to your poetry. You don't know what uh, what meaning it has for them. But yeah, the images need to be valid and strong enough in their own right, uh, at least in my, in my opinion. And that's probably been, been a shift in my work. I don't know if that totally answers your question or if it's a little bit skew-whiffy. You didn't maybe talk about the, the, the revolt against 
poetry is a written medium, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave that to your discretion. The question I would like to ask you is, uh, what is it that you find interesting? What do you, what, what is it when you, what, what is it when Rufo Quintavalli is walking down the street that attracts your eye or, or draws you into a certain direction in order to whip out your phone uh, and take a, a picture of it? But I'm not going to ask that question. If you would like to allude to it later on or at some point, that would be great. Uh, the question I do want to ask you, though, is have you actually had any feedback of your video poetry? Um, and do you think that feedback on video poetry or any form of poetry is a valid um, is a valid way of progressing, a valid way of developing? Uh, and have you had that with your poetry? Yes, I have received feedback and encouragement. And yes, that has probably helped me uh, develop. That encouragement and those kind kind words and kind feedback that I received has allowed me to maybe have a little bit more confidence um, in exploring those moments where something ostensibly ordinary and mundane seems to be uh, uh, invested with a with a significance that it doesn't on the face of it deserve. It also touches a little bit on the question that you didn't, <laughs> that you asked but didn't want to ask. Um, you know, what is a, what is an interesting image to me? That word interesting is a bit of a cop out, isn't it? You know, I find your work very interesting. No, you know, these are moments that I find beautiful or, or significant or, or special or mysterious or magical. Since quite an early age, I've had these experiences, I'm sure many of us had, uh, of seeing something that just seems intensely intensely beautiful and, and special and it doesn't it needn't necessarily be you know a sunset or a or a beautiful you know snow on the mountain kind of thing it can be a or at least for me it can be you know a, a railway bridge or a or a turning in the road so i think you know little by little it was exploring exploring those moments and trying to communicate those moments and getting the right feedback from the right people at, at the right time maybe helped me uh to grow in confidence to say, look, this is special for me. Uh, here, I'm going to put it in front of in front of a wider audience and see if it's special for them. It reminds me, though, when you're going about this this idea of between the you know the mundane and the everyday, um, as opposed to the where you say the snow on the mountain, the, the classical form versus the impressionist structures. If I can go back to something I said at the beginning, uh, this idea of uh, this revolt against the written form versus a video uh, form, which might be a bit of a popularization of poetry. You might disagree, others might too as well, but no matter. I was wondering if you would be able to give a bit of advice uh, for people who are who are going on this journey, who are beginning to uh, you know to look at to look at video poetry as a medium that they might want to express themselves in. What have you found what, that you could give to other people, say to other people that might encourage them in the same way that you've been encouraged by positive feedback by others? Well, you keep on asking me this question, so at some point I'm going to have to answer it about the whole uh, written video, highbrow, lowbrow thing. Um, I mean, I've published several books of, uh, of poetry, some of which you will only find... <laughs> on the dusty bookshelves of dusty bookstores. And I do, you know, I go do spoken word stuff. I do, um, I do the video poetry that we're talking about now. So to me, that distinction between highbrow and lowbrow or, or written or, or oral poetry is not necessarily an interesting, <laughs> a valid, it's not necessarily a valid dichotomy. Um, there's stuff that's well done or there's stuff that's, uh, that's less well done. There's stuff that's uh, captivating, there's stuff that isn't. Um, then there's obviously questions of technical uh, expertise and you know mastery of form and improving improving in your craft uh, by working at it by reading by listening by you know getting feedback. Um, but you can improve your written poetry or you can improve your your oral or your or your video poetry. Uh, yeah, so that would be the advice I would give: is work, work at your craft, um, find people you trust, uh, listen to them, but also be willing to listen more more largely get feedback and eventually develop that own critical faculty inside your own mind where you kind of know what's what's good or less good. Don't be afraid to, to make a fool of yourself. Some, you won't learn anything without occasionally making a fool of yourself, uh, whether as a poet or, or as, a, as a human being. Be willing to expose yourself 
a little bit, uh, potentially make mistakes, potentially make a fool of yourself, uh, potentially get hurt. Stick to your vision, don't be ashamed of your, or embarrassed of your vision, and work on your craft. Really, you know, keep at it. You know, Bob Dylan, who won the, the Nobel Prize in, in literature, and you know, that get, again gets back to that whole highbrow, lowbrow, lowbrow thing. He's got certain lines that honestly sound like William McGonagall, you know, like, uh, "'Twas a dark night in Dallas, I was rubbing my phallus, infamy, infamy, they've all got it, infamy, you know, <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of stuff is just sort of bad, it's embarrassingly bad, and then he can suddenly go off into something that's uh, phenomenal. I, I suppose personally what I would take from that is the idea of uh, sticking to your vision, as you said. If you've got something that's you know, driving you, if there's a passion that you've got there and you want to express it, then you should stick to your guns and run with it uh, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I'd like to however, finish on a, a final question, which would be, who are some of the artists that have inspired you in video poetry? Do you know of any artists who are doing video poetry uh, on a big scale, um, you know, attracting you know, millions of views on YouTube, for example? Um, or have you been inspired by maybe, I don't know, uh, clips of films or uh, footage from, you know, television or anything like that? So I'm not aware of anybody who describes themselves as a video poet and who has millions of followers. Not yet, anyway. Um, I get a, a newsletter, Moving Poems Digest, uh, which keeps you up to speed on stuff that's going on in this field. Um, but I would say, to be honest, I would say my inspiration comes more from poets reading their own work and from uh, filmmakers who I like, uh, and then putting the two together. So I love the old readings of you know Dylan Thomas or W.B. Yeats reading and those very sort of fruity, uh, old-fashioned reading styles they had. Um, and, you know, Yeats is a bit like what I was saying earlier about Dylan. There's some of Yeats that just blows me away. And then there's other stuff that is unintelligible uh, drivel. Uh, you know, if you try reading Yeats's prose, this sort of mythological work, uh, it's like reading William Blake. You know, you're in the, you're in the madhouse. <laughs> uh, but when he's good, he, he's very good. Uh, and then, yeah... Um, I'm currently, in addition to the, the video poetry stuff, I'm also working on a, a long, uh, a long film, um, and we're in the editing process of that—a a poetical, we're calling it. So, a film that, that incorporates a lot of poetry into the, into the, the filmmaking process. Um, and so, working on the editing of that uh, has made me realise what a poetic process editing a film is. Um, you know, you're, you're working with the way one image turns into another. You're, you're working with memories of something that's happened earlier in the film. You're working with visual references. This shape here echoes another shape, uh, another shape a few frames later on, or a few minutes later on. You're overlaying uh, visual, uh, visual meaning with, with semantic meaning, with sound. You know, we haven't talked much about sound or music, but that's a whole other element you can add into it. So... I would say more than you know, visual video poets per se. Uh, it's more filmmakers and just film and film that has uh, inspired me. Uh, I hope some of these rambling, rabbity rants have been of use. Thank you, Rufo, uh, for the tips uh, and recommendations and the film inspirations. Thank you very much for being part of this, for sharing your experience with video poetry. Uh, there's so much more that we could be talking about and I hope that we will be able to talk about it, you know, at another time. The film that Rufo Quintavalli referred to there is Cold Heart Poetical and there is more information about that uh, in the description below. You can also find his, uh, his Instagram uh, under the name of uh, at anemic underscore opus or just search Rufo Quintavale uh, on Instagram and Facebook. I'll just uh, say thank you very much for being here and um, I look forward to seeing more of your work and uh, have a very good day.